2008 saw our oasis break up, never to return again. Yes, the Gallagher brothers still hate each other due to a bust up back here. Guys, you're in your 50s and 40s. You're still hating each other. Sort it out, guys. You're brothers. And this is a very interesting album for Oasis to go out on because for me, it does kind of actually feel like a beginning of a new era for Oasis. A strange, uh, mysterious, dark, gritty, you know, experimental new era. But, of course, we never saw that. And it's sad because this album almost ends like Oasis are walking along the elevator road onto something new. So Niall Gallagher at the time, of course, wanted to return to the more over-the-top style, the more colossal Wall of Sound-esque vibe of Be Here Now, which is strange because he never praises that album whatsoever. But back here, he was like, I want to make Be Here Now. That vibe again, even though I think it's a piece of shit, but... Be here now. So Noel was just wanting to go full force, and that's with the band at this point. And they re-teamed with uh, producer Dave Sardi, who produced Don't Believe the Truth, which I believe was the return to former Oasis album. And they also returned to Abbey Road Studios. Yes, Abbey Road were actually happy to have the band this time after they turned up back in 1997 for the Be Here Now sessions probably looking like something out of fear and loathing in Las Vegas, just absolutely off their heads. And we decided to go back to Abbey Road after being kicked out during the BA Now sessions for being a bit wild. Uh, they let us back in, but we had to pay in cash. We had to pay up front, so we paid for the studio time. So if, if they threw us out, we'd fucking lost all the money. Now this album is a crazy, wild, haunting Oasis album. Just a real sharp, abstract sound from the get-go. Just really Oasis throwing caution to the wind and trying to be ambitious and trying to experiment and actually have a consistent vibe running throughout. There really is a mood to this album which starts off with the opening track, Bag It Up. Just a really direct, odd Oasis mid-tempo rock song. This was not the Oasis of just jumping up and down in a field, you know, having fun, listening to cigarettes and alcohol. This was an ambitious Oasis, a mature Oasis. And Bag It Up really is one of the strangest and most bonkers Oasis openers in all their catalogue. Just real, uh, you know, stomping drums from Zach Starkey, who came into the band at the previous album, Don't Believe the Truth, and was now an official member, set the tone for this kind of carnival-esque atmosphere, this moving forward, dark and looming vibe, kind of a dark carnival vibe. Liam Gallagher with a haunting vocal, and he's talking about stuff like I uh, got my heebie-jeebies, I'm bagging them up. Like, really weird lyrics, this. And there is lots of weird lyrics throughout this. So it just is a really trippy song to open things up with. Really abstract, strange guitars on this. And a crunchiness, a grittiness. And it's not the fast-paced Oasis Open that they have on a lot of albums. But I absolutely love the song. I think it really does set the tone for what Oasis is going to do on this album, which was trying to make you just open your eyes and open your ears and open your soul, dig out your soul, I guess to a more kind of um, an oasis who could go in different places that we'd never heard before. And, you know, it's a very interesting way to open the album. Immediately following up, back up, we have The Turning, which is a dark and looming, mysterious verse of Liam talking about carrying the lantern. And, uh, you know, it's almost like they're walking through darkness with this lantern in this verse. And I get this feeling of, you know, rain and... Just a really strange, otherworldly, haunting vibe to the verses. But then it goes into this Oasis Stadium Anthem chorus. But there is still that menace to it. And there's strange lyrics to this. And there is that dark and looming atmosphere. But it, uh, the turning is one of the best tracks Oasis have done in years at this point. Liam's delivery is incredible. He can be really um, subtle in the, in the verses. But then the chorus, he just throws caution to the wind. And I love The Turning, it's a menacing Oasis rock song. And, you know, again, a great example of where they wanted to go with this album. They wanted to, you know, subvert expectations. And they really did with The Turning. Shock of the Lightning explodes with this old school, you know, in your face Oasis vibe mixed with this psychedelic, strange, trippy atmosphere. Again, lots of strange lines from Liam. A colourful imagery is conjured up in this song. A great pace to it. And it was the first single released because it is a trippy song this but it's 
fast paced, it's direct, it sounds like Oasis, but it's Oasis dipped in a pot of psychedelic tones and vibes. And I love it, and I love the pace to it too. Waiting for the Rapture is the next track, and again, the titles, this imagery is so odd. There really is this odd, strange vibe going on throughout this album. There's a menacing undertone. And Noel Gallagher now gives us a vocal performance that we pretty much never heard from him before. He's really, um, you know, go, with this high delivery, strange, haunting delivery, and, you know, it's this is another wonderful track. You know, it's Oasis trying out different types of melody. Um, and I like it, it's a really hypnotising Noel Gallagher song. Um, it's not one of the best Noel Gallagher songs, but I really think it does fit where the album was going at this point. And the album's starting to kind of, hit, you know, wrap you up in its bizarre style at this point. And I just, I really admire the ambition of this album. You know, it's just, uh, there's so much under the surface of this album. There's so much they were actually trying to get across. And so much imagery, dark imagery to the lyrics. And, I, you know, I really like Waiting for the Rapture. Our Amount of Time sees Liam Gallagher bear his soul and really pay tribute to his hero, John Lennon. I mean, really pay tribute. Really, really pay tribute. It's John Lennon. This really does sound like a John Lennon song, but it's a fantastic song. Liam Gallagher is so honest on this and so vulnerable, and there really is a breezy, nice um, rhythm to the song. It really does feel like uh, you're being carried down, you know, almost like a river of psychedelic uh, relaxation. You know, it's a fantastic vocal from Liam. You know, it, Liam Gallagher has that bravado and has that swagger, but when he goes charming and when he goes, uh, he bears his soul, he's able to do it and you're able to see the vulnerability to the bravado. Get Off Your High Horse Lady is a controversial track among Oasis fans, but I just love it. I love the title. I love the line. Get off your high horse lady. I just think it's a wonderful song title and a wonderful lyric. But this song has a slow pace and it has a, an infectious beat and a great melody. And I love it. You know, I listen to this song when I'm walking and it, it really does, it moves along at this um, steady, steady pace. But, you know, it's psychedelic up the arse. It's Beatles up the arse. But it is Noel Gallagher. Really, really have a great vocal to it. Great vocal to it. And the beat is what really makes it for me on this, and the title, that Get Off Your High Horse Lady, and I love how he, Noel sounds with the delivery. There's wonderful vocals on this album from Liam and Noel Gallagher. They're, re they're really able to convey the feeling they want you to on the tracks on this album. They're really able to um, make you absorbed into the world they wanted you to you know, feel when they were making this album. You know, this uh, strange wall of sound, trippy universe of haunting looming bizarre experimentation and that's what they did and get off your high horse lady is another great example of that falling down i actually think it's one of the best Noel gallagher songs of all time i think this is one of the most underrated oasis songs of all time wow you know this is a real effort to create a sense of isolation and you know but with a spacey vibe to it because it kind of sounds like Noel gallagher seeing this from out of space he's looking for you know he's calling out for someone you know, it's a real sense of um, um, odd zooming through time and space this track, floating around, looking for something, screaming out. It, Noel Gallagher sounds like he's screaming and singing from a million miles away. The, the production on this track by Dave Sardi is incredible to make Noel sound. And, the, you know, the delivery of Noel is great. Uh, it's a real underrated song in in music, really, Falling Down. I love Falling Down. It's fitting to me that it was the last ever single because I think it's the best sounding of them all. I think that if you if I had to sit here now and listen to Supersonic as the first and Falling Down as the last, I think, well, that's a fucking pretty good journey that is between those two, you know what I mean? There's, a, there's, there's some shit in between, but to bookend your career with those two, that'll do me. Noel Gallagher usually he's he gets you with his um, voice and his the little phrases he uses. 
This is where he's really trying to go Stanley Kubrick on your 2001 Space Oddity and literally make you feel this cinematic vibe. And yeah, it's a wonderful track. Um, one of the bit highest points of Oasis. And people don't know about it enough. You should listen to Falling Down. It's stunning, guys. <laughs> I do think there is uh, one dud on this album, which is The Nature of Reality by bassist Andy Bell. It's not great at all. It's It goes nowhere. It absolutely goes nowhere. And I, you know, which is a shame because I like the songs brought to the table by these Oasis albums, these new Oasis members, you know, that joined the band on the Standing and Shoulders of Giants era. I like what they provided in previous albums. I don't like the nature of reality, I just think it goes nowhere. I think it's the only track on this album that's pretentious. And, you know, when you're doing an album full of metaphors and crazy imagery, you know, it's easy to be pretentious. But the rest of the album isn't. This is a bit pretentious because the tune isn't even there. It just goes nowhere, this song, pondering, I guess, the nature of reality, but in a really kind of muted, uh, you know, sanitary way of just nothing resonating. It's a real boring song. Ain't Got Nothing is a step up from that. It's, you know, the second track, which I think isn't really up to much on this album. Liam Gallagher comes with his swagger, but it's a song that just doesn't go anywhere. He tries, but it kind of feels underwritten, the song. It kind of feels like there could have been more verses to it, more lines to it. Liam Gallagher's delivery is good, but it's just not top-tier Oasis. By far, it's not top-tier Oasis. It's not great at all. But Jem Archer, guitarist Jem Archer, did actually write a fantastic song on this. It is To Be Where There's Life, which returns to the Indian-esque uh, psychedelic feels of Standing on the Souls of Giants. I absolutely love To Be Where There's Life. Uh, wonderful drums on this, wonderful um, uh, wall of sound of music going on, bells and whistles up the arse, just constant. Uh, it, you know, it's got that Indian feeling of, you know, you know songs such as um, who Feels Love on Sandy Sons Shoulders of Giants and Go Let It Out and I'm a sucker for that album so I loved hearing that again it's just a strong psychedelic song with a great vocal from Liam Gallagher great songwriting here by Jem Archer um, you know it's not the greatest Oasis song in the world and I've heard people criticise this song but I like it because it reminds me of Sandy Sons of Giants it reminds me of that Indian feel and I love the drums on it I love the Percussion. I love you know. I love all the instruments. So I'm a big fan of "To Be Where It's Life," and I think it really fits on this album. Gives the album where it can be moody at times a much needed kind of uh, um, injection of um, life and release of energy. You know, it's had all this dark energy, but we have some fun on "To Be Where It's Life." Soldier On is the final time we hear Oasis, and it is a Liam Gallagher track, believe it or not. So Liam Gallagher talks about soldiering on on this track and it really does feel like the band walking off into the sunset. But you can read it a couple of ways. There is a finality to this song, but it's also after the album we've had, it's almost like soldier on. We've got more of this and they're moving into a new stage of their career. Um, soldier on is wonderful. It really is one of the best Liam Gallagher songs. Very moody, very slow, but just with this deliberate pace and fantastic um, vocal from Liam Gallagher making you um, think about what's happened to Oasis over the last years. I feel like it's really is a culmination of their career, uh, really is a reflective song. Um, and you know, it, it applies to our lives as well. It's a real song about um, taking responsibility and moving on and soldiering on. You know, it's a strength to the song. Um, you know, there's a real way of picking yourself up and moving on. And I get the feels on, you know, Soldier On. I wish 
this would have been the beginning of the next phase of Oasis career, sadly not. I like all the Oasis albums in their way, but I really respect when they try and experiment. I really respect where they're trying to take their sound in a new direction, a real ambitious direction, where they try not to just be that lads rock band, where they try and actually prove their chops. So, you know, they don't always pull it off, but I'd rather they were doing that, and I'd rather bands do that than just doing the same album again and again. Lots of people don't agree with that, they just want Oasis to be one way. But Dig Out Your Soul, you know, it, throughout the album, a real looming, strange vibe, a haunting, otherworldly atmosphere, and just constant, you know, it kind of feels like throwing everything at the wall, and um, that wall of sound, those constant uh, choice of instruments and unorthodox melodies, vocal melodies, um, the, the bits of songs that just catch you off guard, like the sharpness and the directness of the instruments and the deliberate pace of the drums the otherworldly spacey feel the psychedelic tones everything is going on this album there's so much to it i feel like people need to go back and revisit dig out your soul because i believe it's one of the best oasis albums so thanks for watching everyone i have got through the oasis records i know i took breaks between them because life has been crazy so i haven't been got the time to make videos but i want to come back consistently and I plan to come back consistently and in my next video I am going to rank all the Oasis albums from worst to best to wrap up this kind of look back at the discography of one of my favourite bands so please comment down below what you think of Dig Out Your Soul do you think it's underrated do you think it sucks do you think it's great what do you think let me know such a shame that Oasis didn't go on maybe one day they'll come back but these guys just can't they Mancunians you know they're stubborn. Mancunians are stubborn. I love you guys, but you are stubborn. And Noel Gallagher and Liam Gallagher are probably the two most stubborn Mancunians of all time. Please first subscribe if you enjoyed this video again. And put a like on the video too. And I will see you guys next time.